of Lot's wife is tragic because her longings revealed to us that she was willing to die in Sodom rather than rest in the provision and the refuge of God. Lot's wife is the personification of what it looks like to be in covenant with the world. Joel, you say, what, what does it look like to be in covenant with the world? Where well, James 4 verse 4 tells you, here's what it says. To be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. She was in covenant with the world. Now some of us, we say, oh man, we can look at Lot's wife and we can kind of stick our nose up at her and be like, you know, we can judge her. But there's some of us, you know, we on pied là. We have one foot in and we have one foot out. And today God is challenging you to draw a line in the sand and say, I'm forgetting what is behind and I'm moving forward towards the things of God. I'm leaving those habits behind. I'm leaving those friends behind. I'm leaving those old ways behind. And I'm moving forward for what God has in store for me. Time to draw the line in the sand. Draw the line in the sand. How great is he? So, well, what, what are you saying? What, what's the sermon in a nutshell? I always try to, to, sermon, to, to, to summarize my sermons in one sentence, and here it is. Faith in God not only moves us forward, it pulls us away from the false hopes, and it leads us ultimately to the true place of refuge, that is God himself. I'll say that again. Faith, true faith, genuine faith, born from above, it not only moves us forward, but it pulls us away from all of the false hopes, and it leads us to the ultimate place of true refuge, and that is God. That is God. This is what Hebrews 11, 15 through 16 is saying. It says these words about all the great patriarchs, all of those who walked closely with God. This is what it says. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Check this last verse out. Therefore, God is not a saint to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Speaking of the patriarchs, they were willing to trust him wholeheartedly. They were willing to move forward. Abraham, leave your family, leave what you are comfortable with, leave your sin, leave all those things and go to the place I will show you where, God? I don't know. Follow me. Move forward. Leave those false hopes. I'm going to lead you to a place of true refuge. It wasn't a physical place God was leading him. It was a spiritual place God was leading him. He was leading him to himself. He was leading him to the place where true refuge, true peace, true shalom really lies. It's not in the things of the world. It's not in the material possessions that our world tells us. If you have a bigger house, if you have a big car, if you have this kind of spouse, you will be satisfied. No, no, no. It is in God and in God alone. Our soul will find true rest. Oh, mama. St. Augustine, the great African bishop, the fourth century said, our hearts will continue to be restless until they rest in him. We can try to find rest. We can try to find peace in all of the things the world offers, but our hearts would only truly find rest until they rest in the arms of the Almighty and the one who created us and shaped us. Like a hand fits a glove, you and I was made for him. He's calling you into this divine romance, in this divine dance where you step forward. He steps in. You take a step forward, and he steps in. 
We go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Faith to faith and glory to glory. You take one step of faith and he shows up in his glory. You take another step of faith and he shows up in his glory. And by the time you look back on the journey, what you would have gained is not material possession. What you would have gained is a testimony of the faithfulness of God that he will not fail you. Though you're in the midnight hour, that is the power that we have when we walk with him. Woo. Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. This is what the Lord is calling us to, saints. During the days of the Blitz, while London, the United Kingdom, was being bombed by Nazi Germany, they were experiencing their homes being destroyed. There's a story of one man who, in knowing that the Blitz was coming and that they were going to be bombing from planes, the United Kingdom, London specifically, this man decided to dig a hole in his backyard, a bomb shelter. And as he witnessed his neighbor's house being bombed, he looked into the sky and he saw the smoke and he saw the red flames up in the air. He grabbed the sun. He began to run towards the bomb shelter he had built. His son kind of lagging behind and him realizing time was of the essence. He decides to jump in first. He looks up. He sees the silhouette of his son. He yells out to his son and says, son, jump. Son responds and says, but dad, I don't see you. And the dad responds, but son, I see you jump. The son eventually would jump. I think oftentimes what gets you and I when it comes to taking steps of faith is that we say, God, I, I need to see it. I, I, I don't see how this is going to work out. I, I don't see how I'm going to make more money in six days taking a Sabbath than in seven days working fully. God, God, I don't understand how I'm going to be happy when all my friends are getting down and all my friends are not living in purity. How am I going to be happy and satisfied doing it your way when everyone else on social media look like they're being satisfied? How am I going to be happy? How am I going to move forward in my business when everybody cheat on their taxes but your way says to be honest? How am I going to be satisfied? I don't see it. But God says jump. So many of us are waiting to see it before we obey. But God is saying, no, you obey and then you will see it. If you will trust me, if you will trust me, you will see glories untold. If you will trust me, I will show you my glory. I will show you my beauty. I will show you that I am God and there is none like me if you will trust me. Oh, God. Man. Man, I'm speaking from experience. Step out and to trust him. Say, move forward. Move forward. I'll never forget when God put it on my heart to leave Miami and to go to a place I had no clue about. A foreign place. I barely knew anyone. But God had told me when I had went there previously, he told me, Joel, I'm calling you to this space. I'm calling you to move forward. But God, I'm comfortable. God, I'm here. I'm with my family. I'm with my friends. God said, Joel, jump. I don't see how is it going to work out. I don't see how the funds are going to come through. I don't see it all. He said, Joel, jump. And I jumped. And I kid you not, the glory, it, it hasn't been about what I gained. Yeah, Joel, did you gain a wife? Yes, yes. Joel, did you gain a family? Yes. Joel, did you gain a ministry? Did you gain a career? Yes, yes. But it's not about those things. What I gained was a testimony that no one can take away, that God is not a liar, but he will be faithful to do what he said he would do. So when my next test comes and the enemy rears his ugly head, 
It says you cannot trust God. When he rears his ugly head and says, God will fail you. I remember the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me. And my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Whew. I have a testimony that I can use as a weapon against the enemy, against his doubts, against his lies.